This video was made possible by you. If you want to save time and support what I do, check the link in the description that will take you to my store where you can purchase the source file for what we're creating in this video, as well as other tutorials on my channel. Thank you for your support and let's get back to the video. Welcome back to designing a website in Figma. In this video, we're going to take a look at responsifying elements. So now with the new Figma product, Figma Sites, it is becoming even more of a best practice to build your components fully responsive. And I think we could, we already worked on the footer, we already worked on the header and also the article detail page, but I think we could actually try and redesign, rebuild this to be fully responsive. For now, Let's just probably start with these two variants. So let me duplicate this as a component, as a whole. And I'm going to call this, rename this to horizontal card underscore responsive. And I will now, let's think, I will think about what actually needs to be done. So I'm thinking that this needs to be fill container, definitely where if it goes below a certain size, you simply, we simply rearrange these objects beneath each other. So I think we're looking at the image at the top and the text at the bottom for mobile resolutions. So yeah, let's, let me just try and start setting this up. So that would mean selecting this horizontal card container, right? And by the way, if you are unsure where we got this component, we created this at the very beginning of this series. Definitely go and check out the playlist linked below to see how we built this. But since this is a continuation of that, let's select the inner container. That's going to be the horizontal card container. And let's go for fill container, right? Now, this is going to expand the co contents to the entire width of the element. Let me create an instance by pressing Option and then clicking and dragging this variant just to see what this means. Fill container is going to ensure that basically this is happening, right? But this is not our ideal desktop design, desktop resolution layout. We need to limit this somehow, and we're going to limit this by adding a maximum width to this horizontal card container. I'm going to go to still with this container selected. I'm going to go to fill and then add a maximum width of whatever this width is, which is 956. So again, fill max width 956. Or better yet, I think we could try and apply a variable if we have it for this, which would be 10 columns. Yes, 10 columns, 956. Let's select that. So it's now linked to a variable. But if you can't use variables, if you're using the free plan or just don't want to use variables, you always can just use the number. But just to reiterate, we do have the widths in terms of columns based on our layout grid system with these values that we created a while back and I'm just now applying this, right? Okay, so what does this mean? This means that this is going to still fill the component in its entirety, but at the same time, it's gonna be limited when it expands too much, okay? Another thing that needs to happen is we need to have the wrap auto layout, the wrap option enabled on this. So I'm gonna enable it right now. What this is going to do is we're going to get this behavior, but I don't think we actually need to be immediately switched to the mobile resolution at this size as soon as they meet, right? But I think we could actually set these to be fill container again. We're going to lock the aspect ratio before we do that though. So let's select this image lock aspect ratio, fill container, right? Then a fill container on this as well. We don't have to lock the aspect ratio, we do not. And now when it comes to the space between these, I think that would be 
86, right? Or 90 even, probably 86. Yeah, that's going to be 86 on the horizontal spacing. Let's see if we have a value for that. We don't, a variable. So let's just go for 86, right? This is basically going to do this, right? So we do have some flexibility. That's nice, but we still we still need to make some adjustments. This is not the behavior we want to see. What I would like to see is this width of these elements to be somehow limited to a certain width. And before I start doing that, let me just add 24 in terms of horizontal padding on this element so that we get some space from the edges, right? So we actually get this, okay? Awesome, now let's refer to a blank Figma sites template and let's take a look at what the resolutions Figma sites is working with. We can see that for desktop we are seeing 1280 plus. So let me just note this down. Let me just note these values down. Desktop 1280 plus. Tablet is going to be, as you can see, 800 to 1279, 800 to 1279, and then mobile is going to be 799 and below, right? Which is going to continue right below this range, 799 minus. Let's make this larger. At, that would mean that at around this size would be the tablet, but at the same time, there's going to be 800 to this. So this range approximately is, is the tablet. So why don't I look at what width do we have here when we reach 800 in terms of width. We do have, what, 333 and 333 presumably on this one as well. So why don't I simply, right, with this information, why don't I simply set the minimum width of this element, that's the image, to 333, and the minimum width of the horizontal card container, the text, also to 333. All right, what's gonna happen now? Ideally, from about 800 and below, we should, be, we should switch to the mobile layout, let's see. I'm a desktop, I'm a desktop, desktop, tablet now, still tablet, S still tablet, but now we should be switching to mobile, and there we go, that is mobile. Now the spacing is too big, so why don't I adjust this to 32, something like that, which means we're going to get this. At the same time, I think this warrants some kind of a spacing from the top. Let's just go for 32 from the top. Why don't we try that? 32. Thirty-two. And yeah, it's looking pretty nice. Or actually I think we could just use 32 from the bottom as well. This is going to change probably some values here hopefully not let's see no we do have overrides you that's good cool so that's pretty nice but yep i think i like this this is the responsive behavior that we get now here is the thing let's just set this up first for this variant as well so this means again fill container on this element at the same time, we're going to apply a maximum width of 956, which is going to be 10 columns, 956, yes. Fill container on the text, fill container, oh, locked aspect ratio, and fill container on this image. 86 on the horizontal spacing after we enable wrap, so it's going to be 86 and then 32 on the vertical one, right? Yeah. And then we're going to select both of these and add maximum width, or sorry, minimum width of 333 points. And this should make the same 
behavior that we have here. Let's take a look. Awesome. So as you can see, that is truly the case. However, we still forgot about spacing from the sides. So let's go for 24 or padding. Depends on how you look at it. All right, and this is what we get now. So it's looking pretty nice. Now here's a problem, right? Here is a problem. Let's say that I am going to use this content, right? I'm going to use this to fill content, these components, right? I would use them like this, but at the same time, if I then, let's, let me just add some color to the image so that we can truly tell there is some kind of a difference. This one's gonna be green and this one's gonna be like blue or something. Let me actually command X, paste it here, right? Just to see which one is which. All right, so we have, the, we have these two elements. Now they are both responsive, it's pretty nice. However, if I now select both of these and do a mobile version, this is going to happen, okay? This is going to happen. As you can see, this is not ideal. Why is this not ideal? Because at first you get text button image and then you get image text button. Ideally, we'd wanna have this on the top. So we have a headline here, image, image, right? So even since we want this alternating layout, there has to be a workaround. And this workaround, I believe, is going to be changing the direction of this. So if I simply swap the direction, now it's going to work, right? That is because if you take a look at this component, if you take a look at the order of elements, Figma simply puts this one first and this one second, and in this case, this one first and this one second, all right? That's the only reason. But if you override this, if you use this to fill some content, then yeah, then you're just going to see, you're going to see a different order of elements and you're going to have to change the direction. But I don't think that's a too much too big of an issue because actually let's do this. Let me just take these two things and let's paste them into the into the Figma sites that I prepared here. Figma sites empty file. And as you can see, I'm just going to I'm just gonna have to make this larger. I'm gonna position this. What I'm gonna have to do is simply change the direction of one of those on mobile and it's going to keep the content, but also it's gonna keep the keep a different layout. So even this is an override on mobile. So for, from Figma sites, from Figma, from Figma, we know that if you do an override on desktop or mobile, it's gonna be changed here, but it's not gonna affect the whatever is here, right? Similar to if I were to use a headline, right? Just to quickly show you the logic. And by the way, more Figma Sites tutorials are definitely coming because Figma Sites is an amazing product and I'm so happy that Figma finally launched this. So what you can do is if you on mobile, you change this, right? Then you can keep these other intact. However, if I were to change this headline on desktop and reset all changes, ah, then it's gonna be affecting the content, right? But because I did some kind of an override, it wasn't, it wasn't affecting the these other text objects let me see if that works again yeah so right now as you can see normally when i change something on desktop it's going to be changed on the smaller resolutions but if i change the smaller resolutions it's not going to affect desktop right because desktop is the main one that's the overall logic this is based on how css actually works let's not get into that but here's one problem that I've noticed, right? If I'm using a smaller sizes on these images, you can see that it overlaps beyond the layout and that's not good. So this means we're gonna probably have to remove the minimum width on this element. So let's just remove the minimum on this one and let's remove the minimum on this one, remove min. Let's see what that does and it should fix the problem because this, the layout switching is still gonna happen, but now this is not gonna be affected. But at the same time, as you can see, this is also not ideal. This is a problem because we don't want this image to shrink as much. Maybe if the minimum width of this would be like 200, let's try what that does. Let's do minimum, minimum width, 200. Let's see what's gonna, yeah, I think this is, okay, I think this is pretty nice. 
I think this makes sense. The image is rather small on these sizes. At the same time, it's like, it's visible. And I think this is a good compromise. So let's do for 200 on this one. Minimum width 200 on this one as well. Now it should work the same way. Okay, so we got this beautiful, beautiful responsiveness. Okay, so why don't I do this one as well? So we can just squ quickly skim through this one. Both of these are fill, right? So lock aspect ratio. Both of these are going to be fill container. This one is going to be, the spacing is going to be, what, 86, right? 86 and 86. I don't know why I have 90. Never mind. Both of these two are going to be fill container. The minimum width, the minimum width of this one is going to be 333. And of this one, that's going to be a different minimum width. That's going to be actually 200 as well. And then with this one, it's going to be also minimum width of 200. Let me just test these. Let's test these in the wild. All right. And yeah, of course, because we didn't set up a fill container on this main container at the same time with the maximum width of 956 applied through a variable. So 956 minimum width variable 956, right? 10 columns. Let's test this out. Awesome. It works. One, two final steps. That would be 24 on the horizontal padding, right? 24. And then, of course, enabling wrap. Enabling wrap. And now it should finally work. Amazing. Exactly what we need. Let's fix the spacing. That would be 32 on the top and bottom, actually. Top and bottom. 32, 32. Okay. And yeah, nice. The spacing on the vertical spacing is gonna be 32 of this horizontal card container so that it's absolutely identical to this one. And now this is the final result. We're gonna be having, we're gonna be having this behavior here. And this behavior, if we actually, if we actually enable full container on this one here as well, on the horizontal card container inside, right? and maximum width of whoops we messed up min and max so max it's going to be 956 apply through a variable apply through a variable let's see if that works finally no it doesn't because we don't have minimum on this one yep we don't have minimum on the text 333 three. boom finally okay it finally works nice so again, if we use the alternating layout like this, but then at the same time, we want to use it on mobile, right? We're going to have to switch the direction on mobile, right? But since we're going to have overrides on the headlines and so on, it should be no issue. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. That should be it. We are, we turn this component into a fully responsive layout, which is awesome. We can now use it in Figma sites. Definitely look forward to more Figma sites tutorials in the future. This is just the very beginning, just my beginning of the experimentation with it. All right, so let's just tidy up here. Let's remove these elements, remove this one. And let's just shrink this and let's replace it with this one. We're still going to have to add some content to these, swap the content because here we're using the old non-responsive variant. So I'm just going to select the two of these or rather move this one out here and move this out in. And since we still want to keep this one, let me just do command X trash and I'm going to paste it here in the trash to serve as a backup of our non-responsive elements. All right, guys, again, this is it. Responsive layout, it works perfectly. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you found this useful. If you did, please leave a like and purchase the source file from my store if you'd like to support the channel and save time. You're gonna get all of this. Thanks for tuning in again and see you in the next one.